Good morning, Dr. Lim here. When I started the video series to teach kinotherapy, I found that there are three types of video that are necessary. First is the lecture video, where the student have to watch it over and over again to learn the important teaching. Next is the general discussion to expand and supplement the lecture, where the student may need only to watch it once or a few times. Last are the general story about the topics, which the student may just need to watch once we do. Also, many times I have some good and interesting story to tell. Of course, normally we do not put storytelling or jokes in the lecture notes, as it will affect the time of revision for the student, when they have to watch the lecture again for more skill learning. So I decided to come out with a series of talk, which is best for you to watch it over a cup of the exam coffee. So I call it the coffee talk. It covers some interesting stories about my experiences and also about the exam, genotherapy and etc. I shall make it simple and straightforward. This is not a technical talk, so I need not put in a lot of graphic in the video, just a storytelling that make my life much easier. At first, I want to let the computer talk to you, but many of you feel listening to the computer talking is an insult to your intelligence. You want a real voice from me, so forget about computer talking. Let me talk to you in person. I am having a coffee and wearing a t-shirt now, so it may not be good to video myself like this. This will damage my good image. I just put on my best photo and my voice over. You can also have a cup of coffee at hand. Imagine I'm drinking the coffee in front of you too, listening to some of the stories that I am going to tell you. In this first coffee talk, I'm thinking what should be the first story for me to tell you. Since you are the members of the accent, maybe it's best for me to start with the story of the accent, how I started the accent from, from scratch, and etc. I always advise members to study the history and development of the accent. From the accent story, you will learn a lot. How we start small and simple, how we solve the problem we encountered, and how we expand the business to world-class company. Let's flash back to the early day. After I discovered Gedonoma from the forest of Malaysia, I decided to cultivate it myself. I tried to search for someone who can guide me and coach me on cultivation of Gedonoma. Unfortunately, I started to realize that no one is going to teach me how to make the spawn from the wild species in the forest. I even go to Thailand where I know one monk who is very close to one mushroom company. Even so, the owner refused to teach me. He kept on saying, next year we are going to have classes on this, which in plain language is, sorry, I'm not going to teach you. When I want to see the spawn labs, he just bring me to a corner which I cannot see much. After a few failure of getting technical assistance for making tissue culture for Gerudoma, I decided to learn it myself. I go to the bookstore and buy whatever books on mushroom cultivations. About six books on that. I have to focus on the tissue culture and spawn making first. In the book is written about how to make a stara spawn box, where we can put in our hands with growth and stara slips and work in a stara environment for the tissue culture. I designed a box and asked my carpenter friend to make it for me. Many trials failed, full of contaminated mold or the mycelium never grew. After many attempts, in one trial, I had to go out station because of MADA, my survey organization, sent me to attend some meeting away from home. I still remember, I keep worrying about the tissue culture. So every day I call home and talk to my wife and ask her how is the progress of the tissue culture. This time, the lab is at my home. For the first two days, nothing happened. I'm quite worried and thought maybe my experiment failed again. However, then come in the third day, some mycelium started to grow from some of the cutting. Not all were growing, but at least some tissue culture were started to grow. They are like the side lady, refuse to show her face when I'm around. 
When I'm not around, then happily comes out to see the world. Ah, so let's go through in the details of how I successful they cultivate the Ganoderma. I leave it to the future talks. As in these talks, I'm supposed to tell you how I started the XN. So let us focus back to the subject. From the story of how I started to plant the DXN Ganoderma, I just want to tell you. When I work hard to develop my own technology in the cultivation, I develop the technique to mask cultivate the spawn, to mask sterilization of mushroom locks, even the design of the cap of the locks and the vertical garden concept of hanging the mushroom lock like a wall. Using the eco-farming concept of let the plant adapt to the environment rather than change the environment for the plant and of course totally organic and eco-friendly that distinguish the Gadonoma farm of the extent from others. Eventually, many imitators started to imitate us but with limited success. First because they buy the spawn from China or Taiwan where the temperature is lower than Malaysia and the Gadonoma does not grow well in Malaysia. Secondly, the formulation for the spawn culture are not too correct. This result in poor growth of Ganoderma. End up the farm is mainly for show, but they buy the Ganoderma from the third parties. I am trying to tell you in this story of the extent Ganoderma planting, sometimes we do face limitation and obstacle in life. But when we overcome it, we can go far, very far. Just like in the story of how we develop the computer program for one world, world market, all programmers and IT engineers said it is not possible for such a program. In the XN, we never take no for an answer. So I started to learn programming and wrote the program. With the success in the computer system, the XN is able to go worldwide seamlessly, while other companies have to struggle to establish the system for every new country. Now, Come back to the establishment of the XN. That time, I do not have much money to establish the company. How am I going to start the company without money? So the first step is to get enough money to establish the company. At that time, I'm serving in Muda Agricultural Development Authority, mainly in charge of the bridge and the irrigation works. The salary that I earn per month can hardly be enough for me and my parents' family to survive. On top of that, my younger brother is studying in university. All his tuition fees and living costs I have to support. Even I am very careful with my expenses. I seldom go to restaurant and entertainment places. I never buy anything luxurious for myself and cut down all the social activities as much as I can. But at the end of the month, there is hardly any money left. For the day I come to the hard religious and that. From, the, from my salary alone, there is no way I can establish a company. Then I think further. Maybe being self-employed and doing some business is good. However, I cannot stop working as I need a salary to survive. And doing part-time business is the best one for me. At the time, the market was very excited with medical therapy. They magnetized the water and drank it. A lot of good testimony around. Then I designed a type of magnetic cushion, where when we sit, we can put it at, the, at our back to relieve back pains and put it in front too for the stomach disorder. When not in use, can put the mineral water across it to magnetize the water. I borrow one magnetizer from one of my engineer friends and buy some raw material to magnetize them into magnet and put in a cushion of my design. It works well. The products are selling. However, it got a problem. This is very lasting. Once people buy, there is no repeat sales. After some time, the business started to drop. As one old Chinese saying, bad luck always come in pairs. The manager also broke down. My production stopped. This is beyond repair, as this is an very old machine. My friend ran, ran it to me without cost. I am very apologetic and want to compensate him. He refused to accept my money. I say it is an old machine which they put in the storeroom and considered an disposed machine. So I need not worry about it. To this day, he remains my very good friend. Then I think maybe I should start on something that is consumable and having repeat sales every month. 
I think of bee products and honey then. I started to join a company that sells honey and bee pollen, raw jelly and etc. At first it is doing well. Then I found the quality of the products are fluctuating. Consumers were complaining. When I report to the company, they refused to entertain me. Then I realized it's not good to get the products from others. I should do it myself and control the quality. You may ask, why not sell the Gadonoma then? The Tam Gadonoma is still under experiment. To decide which is the best species, what method is the best to cultivate it, it is easier to say than done. It takes a very long time to study. Even I try to sell Gadonoma, no one is believing in it. And when put in pharmacy, no one's buying it. So times fry and fry. I had to practice the endurance of the six good practices of Sunya, endure the hardship and cultivate my patience. Accumulate the money bit by bit. When facing failure, adjust my strategy again and again. As I told you, failure is the mother of success. From the magnetic cushion, I learned that we should go for repeated sales. From the honey products, I learned that you should not rely on others for the quality. When a gondonoma failed to take off at all the pharmacy, I know the conventional market did not work. As you see, when we fail once, we learn once. And our strategy improved to the next level. My magnetic cushion and honey selling were not complete failure. Other than making some money, I learned many valuable lessons of what to do and what not to do. From the very early, I realized that if I continue to work, I shall become a prisoner until the day I pension. I have to punch card when I enter office in the morning, punch a card when I go to lunch and back from lunch, then before going home, punch again one more time. I am not free to go anywhere. Every time I have to apply for leave, and sometimes was rejected. The job was full of prices. I am in charge of irrigation and supervise the construction of rural routes and bridges. At peak, there are 20 construction jobs running concurrently. I have to prepare the progress report, advise payment to contractors, mobilize my staff to supervise the projects and etc. That is not the worst part. Many contractors are small contractors. Sometimes they lack the fund. The project were delayed. Sometimes they did not work exactly as per the contract plan. The easiest way is to ask them to hack and review it. Then they were bankrupt for sure. My father was a small time contractor too. Money always lacking. And bankrupt too when the client does not pay the money well. Even though he completed the job nicely. I pity the contractor and have to redesign on the spot. When the steel is not sufficient, I have to put in extra steel. All this were not easy job. Then come the irrigation season. The real nightmare began. Those on the high ground do not get the water in time and making tons of noise. Why water do not reach them yet? We did have pumps to pump the water, but the numbers are limited. The area supervised is about 25,000 hectares, almost one third the size of Singapore. The pumps were always not enough. Those at the low level also make a lot of noise because their pretty fields were flooded and demand us to stop the water supply. They come to the office shouting and yelling sometimes. I have to treat them to coffee and talk very nicely. When I reach home, I am tired and energy is always not enough. I feel sick with the job. My dream is to become a good engineer. Design a bridge like San Francisco Hanging Bridge or at least something like the Penang Bridge. End up the only design in my engineering career was a rural bridge. Even though a simple bridge or so, I have to confront my big boss who decided on a wrong loading. I quarreled and quarreled with him until finally he accepted my proposal of correct loading. But the relationship was ruined and he makes sure sometimes I do not get my leave. I become his red eye bad boy, not a blue eye boy. I feel like living in hell while doing the engineering job. But I have to face the hardship and deal with reality. Go through the tire and error of doing business and how to gather enough money to start a company. The whole process took 10 years. I joined mother on 1st August 1984 and resigned on 31st July 1994. Totally 10 solid years, not a day less, not a day more.
In short, my career as an engineer was a hard and depressing career. Once I bid goodbye to it in 1994, I never looked back. Sayonara forever. No see you again, please. My career in engineering may not be a failure, but it has no achievement in any sense. However, I learned a few valuable lessons while serving in MADA. They are better to be self-employed than work under a harsh boss. Better to do some business to save money rather than try to save from your salaries. And of course, many other lessons which I shall tell you in the future stories. As the Chinese old saying goes again, luck always comes once. Misfortune always comes twice, like twins brothers. I have had more than enough misfortunes by 1992. All the siblings of misfortune have visited me, one after the other. Then finally, my luck came. Government must have realized that they pay us engineers very poorly. Then they decided to pay us a one-time bonus. As I served almost 10 years now, I got 17 thousand ringgit. It was more than 10,000 that I saved for my salary, you know. So it excited and drilled hope into me. When luck comes, it comes only once. So now it has come. I must catch it and start a company by all means. Do it now or never. In my bank account, I have 70,000 by then. I make very careful accounting as every cent and dollars are precious to me. I can still remember to this day that I saved 10,000 ringgit for my salary, 17,000 from the one-time bonus the government paid me, 18,000 from the selling of magnetic cushion, and 25,000 from the honey and royal jelly. Oh, now I've drank my cup of DX and coffee. So most probably you have finished yours too. I do not even cover the story of starting the DX and yet, but no worry about that. In the next coffee session, I shall tell you the story of how, with only 70,000 ringgit, I started the XN. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.